Hello, the Green Corner Button Show. I'm Gregory Hart II. Today I am here with the rhythm guitarist of Bad Wolves, Chris Kane. Hello, Chris. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. Um, all right, so first question is, where are you from and where did you grow up at? Uh, I'm originally from, well, I, I was born in Nebraska, and I grew up in Des Moines, Iowa, which is where I'm currently at right now, um, back here for the holidays and stuff like that. And uh, I've lived here about my whole life. Uh, I moved to California about seven years ago, and I've been living in Hollywood uh, since 2013. All right, cool. Um, so what made you want to play music? Um, so when I was, when I was, uh, when I was a lot younger, like maybe about eight or nine, I had an uncle of mine who was always giving me, um, he always had doubles of like, he always had like three or four copies of like, you know, Highway to Hell or, you know, Destroyer by Kiss or something like that. So he'd always give me his like extra copies of hard rock and, you know, metal music. And that's what I first started listening to, you know, at a young age was that kind of music. And I've just always been a fan of it. My dad used to listen to rock and roll on the radio and stuff like that and and like you know he was a biker guy so and all of his friends did so just growing up around it is kind of what really got me involved in like hard rock and metal and stuff like that and then i kind of expanded from there and got into you know Ozfest and you know the bands that you know slayer hate breed demue you know that's cool. uh, yeah were you ever into uh, Lead Biscuit? Yes, <laughs> still am. Cool. Yeah, uh, I would say one of my uh, what that would be like a bucket list band I would love to tour with. Not gonna lie. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see here. So, how did Bad Wolves form as a band? So, Bad Wolves started out with John um, and this guy Max Karen. Um, <clears throat> so, once John left Devil Driver, he so Max was actually the guitar tech. Uh, for Devil Driver. So when they were on tour together, I want to say five years ago, or maybe roughly around there, they, John knew that he was about to depart Devil Driver. And so him and Max started writing music on the road. And then about 2014, John gets a hold of me and asked me if I wanted to be a part of it. Because um, at the time, I was just a guitar tech, and he always knew that I wanted to start writing music again. So they had a handful of songs already ready to go. A lot of the songs that are on Disobey, actually, uh, were written by those two. And then uh, John brought me in, and then um, then the hunt was on for a singer, and and that was that was quite a mission. Like trying guys out left and right, and you know, <clears throat> people saying they want to do it, and then backing out, and then just people just weren't good enough, and then it's like out of nowhere, like Tommy came in and it was just the perfect fit, like. Like his style, he's a he's a friend of ours, and you know, so we clicked immediately. So it was crazy how fast it worked out once Tommy got involved. It was just like, this is the guy, like you know, and everybody else was kind of like a uh, maybe, you know. <laughs> and then uh, and then Doc and Kyle came in right at the same time, and then the reason why Doc came in is because Max, the original guy that was writing the music from the beginning, um, he just didn't want to go back on tour starting from the beginning he had a pretty good career as like um a guitar tech and like he also uh works on music at home and stuff like that and like you know being in a band is one thing but traveling on the road as much as we do it takes a fucking toll on you and like it's hard and if you're just not mentally ready for it and like you know we still write music with him and stuff now but he just uh kind of stays at home he's like the sixth member of the band not a lot of people know about but that's cool yeah um, so, uh, how many strings do you guys play on the guitars? Is it usually just six, or do you guys we play? Only... We play all the strings. No, I mean, like... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have, uh, we have different, uh, so we started out with seven strings. We still use seven strings now, but then, um, I currently use a, set, like, live, I'll, I'll go through three different guitars. I'll use a seven string, and then I'll use, um, a bar six-string baritone, and then I'll use a six-string that is just tuned to drop C, so not quite as low as the other two that are a G. Mm -hmm. is, um, but yeah. And I don't think we're going to go beyond seven. If anything, we'll probably, as time goes on, might just 
those might start to disappear. But all right, you never know. Because when I saw you guys at Catfest a few months ago, I couldn't really see very well. I was like, eh, it looks like maybe seven strings, but I'm not sure. So. Yeah, so, but yeah, sevens and sixes. Because I know there's a, a great deal of uh, palm muting in your music. Like, you know, the palm muting technique. So that's pretty interesting. Um, let's see here. Who were some of your biggest influences as a musician? Um, growing up, um, and I'm still nowadays, uh, you know, Zach Wild is mm -hmm. my favorite guitar player. And, um, well, it's like right there between him and Dimebag. Like, oh, yeah. you know, um, those are two of my biggest inspirations. But, um, you know, growing up as well, I like uh, Tony Wyoming from fucking Black Sabbath, uh, Randy Rhodes, who played in Ozzy, um, you know, Eddie Van Halen, you know. The shredders, because you know, when I was younger, that's all I wanted to do was just, you know, just how fast can I, can mm -hmm. I play guitar solos and stuff like that. And those guys were kind of the kings of it, in my opinion. Um, so like, well, those are the biggest ones. And you know, there's, even though, he's not like a huge inspiration to me, but like I remember when I saw Kiss for the first time and I saw Ace Freely, the guitar player, play, I was like, yeah, I want to be like that. You know, that's where I, I fell in love with the Gibson Les Paul. And, Mm -hmm. everything else like that even though ace isn't the greatest guitar player in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> there's just something about it and this style or whatever that also brought me in so all right uh what is your favorite song to play live with bad wolves hmm that's a good question um even though we don't play it so much well we do at the headlining shows and stuff but uh no masters is always a it's always a fun one just because it's um the tasty riff i believe is how <laughs> uh, that's how tommy announced that cat fest yeah <laughs> yeah um that riff and then um actually from, from the new record i like playing the song called foe or friend yeah that's a good one i'll play that at cat fest. yeah the um uh, it's just a fun heavy song to play live and even like the even the rock songs that even some of the newer rock songs that we have like the song called uh, Walk Again mm -hmm. and uh, um, even Killing Me Slowly uh, those are you know they're fun to play as well. It's hard to pinpoint one to be honest with you. Now I'm talking about it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what is your favorite song that you guys have ever made? Favorite song that we've ever made. Mm -hmm. um, Hmm. Shoot. Well, I mean, the, the song "Learn to Live" is gonna is one that's gonna always hold a special place in my heart because that was the first song that we came up with as a group, and it's still a song that we play live now. Mm -hmm. And um, and that was the first song that you know Tommy put vocals on, and you know I remember, I'll never forget like that one like the first time hearing back like the demo of him doing the chorus, the staring awake at the ceiling part, and like. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always been uh, it was, so that that that's definitely one of those songs that that I'll never forget when it came together. Like, holy shit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But don't get me wrong, there's a lot of new songs on this recent record that are um, meaningful too. Like, you know, working on the song "Crying Game" together as a group, uh, for a friend working on that together as a group. Because nowadays, when we write music, it's kind of be spread out. Like, John will have a riff, Doc will have a riff, I'll have a riff we'll kind of demo it out at home and then we'll get together in the studio or we'll send it to the, the guys in the studio and they'll kind of change it up a little bit. And so, but the fun ones are like when we all get together and we're arguing, but then getting along. And then, you know, when something comes out, it's like, it's really like the bad wolves flavor, if you want to mm -hmm. call it. That. So that's cool. Um, what's been your favorite moment of being a part of the band? Um, favorite moment. Um, I mean, I, I love <laughs> as corny as this sounds. I'm, I kind of just love every moment of it because you know I was, I did a podcast last night and I was talking about like second chances and stuff like that. And a lot of not a lot of people really get um a second chance like we do in the music industry and then having the success that the band has had. So I'm just 
I'm just enjoying it every little bit of it while it lasts because, you know, with this industry and everything, it can end like that, you know? And so, and I'm fortunate enough to be in a band with, you know, what I would consider all my best friends. So that's also another good feeling to have is, you know, you're with your homies, doing it with your homies. And it's, uh, doesn't it doesn't make it like uh painful at all it's just you know i'm happy to see everybody every day and i'm happy to get up on stage and play with them every night that we do play so that's cool yeah um what are some bands you'd like to tour with in the future besides love biscuit <laughs> uh, <laughs> um well a big one would be like with slipknot i would love to tour with slipknot oh yeah, yeah. Love slipknot um uh gojira but out um disturbed honestly um i'm really looking forward to touring with megadeth in um europe coming up in february um i mean metallica obviously that'd be a big one Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) um yeah i mean just trying to just play with the bands that i feel like would work well with us you know i feel like we could go out with gojira and play like a heavy set and and yeah. hang in there and then i feel like we could go out with disturbed and kind of give like a little bit of both like you know rock songs heavy songs and make songs yeah you know i feel like we're diverse enough to where we can make it work with just about most you know heavy bands new metal bands metal bands you know i'd kill switch engage i'd love to go out with kill switch you know mm-hmm. i think that would be a great tour what about uh butcher babies i remember uh heidi came up on stage with y'all a few weeks ago or something and said, yeah um yeah. Butcher Babies, you know, yeah, th- th- those are also, like, close friends of ours, and we've talked about um, maybe potentially doing something in the future. Um, but, yeah, no, that's definitely, like, an option for sure. Oh, if you guys do, make sure you come to Oklahoma City, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> make sure to let the guys know. <laughs> um, how do you feel about the current state of heavy metal and rock music? And what do you say to the people who say that heavy metal and rock is dead? It's just, uh, it's, it's just not. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'll just, I'll just say that. Um, And the reason why I say that is just because the past, like the past couple years have been like uh, proof. You know what I mean? Like I used to work in the pop industry and, you know, I did that for a long time and I don't see much of a difference from a lot of those shows to the shows that we've just been doing recently with five finger death punch and three days grace Mm -hmm. and um, these festivals that we've been doing and stuff like that. I mean, people can say that rock's dead. Maybe it had a, had a little bit of a lull a few years ago. Um, Mm -hmm. But I mean, my personal opinion, it's back and it's here and like, yeah, I mean, like, I just recently standing on stage and just looking out at, like, an entire arena full of people pumping their fists and, like, doing this. And I don't know. It's just, it goes to show it's not dead. It's very yeah. alive, in my opinion. So. That's cool. To everybody that says it's dead, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, what were um, what were some of the things you did before you were in Bad Wolves again? Uh, so... The, like uh, I used to be a guitar tech and backline tech. So the last group that I was working for right before I started to do the band was the, the Chain Smokers, okay. and then before that was a band called Five Seconds of Summer. Uh, guitar tech for a guy named Mike Posner. Oh, okay. uh, Christina Perry. I did a couple one-off gigs with uh, Tears for Fears. It's uh, a pretty big names there. I had big, the hard, hardest thing was uh, I got the, uh, right at the end, uh, I got offered Jay Z, but I had to turn it down because I wasn't able to, to take the tour because I was in South America. But um, it, it, the career got pretty up there as far as like uh, the artists and stuff I was working for. But, you know, like I said, I was talking about second chances. It's like this came back around again. I wasn't going to let this one slip away. So I took a step back from doing that and just fully soak it up. Uh, fully focused <laughs> on the band. <laughs> all right, so. cool. Well, that's all the questions I have for today. Um, thank you very much for coming on. It means the entire world to me that you came on. No problem. Um, so have where, me. where can we find you on social media? Uh, you can find me um, on just pretty much Instagram. My Instagram 
handle is let's have Chris. It looks like let's shave Chris, but it's let's have Chris. And then uh, <laughs> anything Bad Wolves related, you can just go to badwolvesnation.com. You can find out all the tour dates. People ask us all the time, when you come in here, when you come in there, just go to the website and look. It's all right there. And you can get tickets there. You can get merch. You can get the record. You can go on Spotify and just listen to the record for free if you want to. I don't care. Just listen to it. But, um, yeah. All right. Thanks. No problem, man. Well, uh, I appreciate this.